Hi Ted, I'm back again this week to show you a few more bits and pieces, I hope you find interesting. This week the theme is flora, or flowers. And I like to start with this sort of um, driftwood bonsai. It's a similar idea I've got for the leaves that I used on one or two picture frames I've showed in the past. Yeah. Well, I sort of cut the wood at an angle just to uh, show that the grain to its advantage. But the um, the trunk is just a uh, copper wire, which is shape, and it's just on a natural piece of driftwood. But how did you make the leaves? The yeah. leaves, um, well, like I say, it's just driftwood. All I did basically was shape them, drill holding, dab a super glue to put the copper wire in. Uh, I think this is had a coat of. I haven't coated it. No. That's natural. It's a nice effect, isn't it? A lot of those. I think, yes, yeah, natural. Didn't put anything nice. Can't remember now, mate. That much stuff, I just can't remember from one to the, to the next how we uh, make these things. But I think it looks nice anyway. Yeah, yeah. Basically, just uh, driftwood, copper wire. Bit of black paint and now. Nice, do you like that? Very nice. So staying on the, the bonsai theme for a bit. In the 90s I used to make quite a few of these type of things. You could buy these in the shops in the 90s but it was just like they used wire but they used like um, for the leaves, you know those cheap um, um, this type of quartz or paste they call it, you know, mock jewellery. Mm. They just use those for the leaves. But I had this idea um, of shaping the leaf with, with the copper wire and then skimming uh, white PVA glue over it because it sort of sheets straight away, you see. Yeah. And so wait for that to dry thoroughly and give it, did it, dip it again. There's quite a lot of strength, strength in it then. So then basically just paint it two colours contrasting colours and let the paint run into each other to give that sort of effect. Yeah. Which I think is quite nice. That's sort of like the Bonsai style. This was just the um, same thing basically. Now I made those in the 90s, I saw quite a few of those. Um, so when I, when I found these in the loft a couple of three weeks back, it gave me the desire to have a go at making another one. Which I did. I don't actually finish this this afternoon. This is using a different technique. A slightly different technique, yeah. Do you like it? Look, I'll show you first. Do you like it? It's, the the colours are quite striking, isn't they? Yeah. They're sort of purpley. Well, the, you, <clears throat> you can't go wrong with colours as long as you're using different shades of the same colour. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is what that is. So it's the same again, it's a copper wire. I had a natural piece of uh, rock off the, off the beach. But I've got a different technique now. I wanted to do wider leaves, so what I do now, it's the same. I shape the leaves with the copper wire, and then I covered it all with um, masking tape. Yeah. Right? Then cut round the shape of the leaf, and then skim it with the white PVA glue. Let it go off and then I give it another coat just for strength. Crinkling it up, you know, just to get that sort of, I don't know, what you call it? Sort of psychedelic look, I don't know what yeah. you call it. But I think it's quite effective. Yeah, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? And then just paint it, same again, with two uh, two colours. Same colour basic with a, I think I put a drop of um, black paint in, but it's the same colour. Uh, but let them, you know, keep it really wet. And then the colours run into each other, you say? Yeah. I think it's a lovely effect. Yeah, it does look nice. That sort of bonsai style, which is the front. That's the front. I think it's quite effective. I'll leave that there. Stand on the flower theme. In the 90s, no, this would have been 
Yeah, it would have been the light in the 90s. Um, I pruned back the neighbour's cherry tree I volunteered with an ulterior motive because it was a cherry tree uh, and it was pruned back hard and so I finished up with uh, quite a lot of offcuts. Um, so when it seized and left it for about a year, 18 months, I made these out of it. That's that's just cherry, apart from the leaves of course. Yeah. I can't even what it was now. That could be you. Uh, but the the um the vase and the flowers are they're cherry. They're quite attractive, are they don't you think? Yeah, it's a nice finish the the, yeah. the, the wood, isn't it? Comes out quite nice. Does it take long to make something like this? It's time consuming, yeah. It's not a sort of thing you sort of do for a living, it just takes too long, but you know, when it's hard, you can have a lot more fun with it. That's all it's That's it. There's no rushes there, you can well, make no, things. <coughs> if it's hard, you, you can really enjoy look. it, you know. You, can just have to, you, know. you haven't got to cut any corners or anything That's like it. that. That's it. <coughs> and they just go flat on the wall, you see, the shape, so it just go flat on the wall and there. Yeah. They take up very little space, so basically, you can put them anywhere. Yeah, they look quite nice yeah. on the wall, don't they? So. Last week I gave you a puzzle to solve. Um, if you've any of you had a go at making it, which you probably could have done quite quickly, and you couldn't solve it, then... Here's the uh, so so solution. You say it's done. Happy works, I'm going to fail enough, I'll fail if it doesn't. Um, so it was out of balance, what, ten? How, how to balance ten nails on there? Like so, but all at the same time. Yeah. Sounds impossible, but this is how it's done. Hopefully. That's sort of herringbone fashion. Yeah. There you go. Oh, no. Very good. Ten nails all balanced on the on the tip of one nail. It worked. That you wouldn't have thought that possible, would no, you? No, you wouldn't. But have I balanced. suppose there's, there's tricks and ways of doing all sorts of things, isn't there? <coughs> That's tough with that. So. So you got another puzzle for us this week. One more this week, yeah. <coughs> I just put those back. Now this, the one I'm going to show you now, it's an old puzzle, it was patented in 1840, but this been 2016, I'm going to give you slightly different it's rules, because the rules then are a bit inappropriate now, Yeah. you probably understand what I mean when I'm showing what it's all about. Now the plan is, for three uh, jailers to get three convicts, across this river onto the other bank, this fast flowing river, and there are only two of these uh, men capable of rowing this boat. Now it's up to you which is which, but one is a jailer and one is a convict, and they are, they're the only ones that can row the boat. They're the ones with the tips, the, the, because the, the this, spots on the You see the dots on yeah, top of the heads? Yeah. So one of those has got to be in the boat at all times. Right, now the plan is, I say to get across the river safely, at no time can the jailers ever be outnumbered by the convicts, because if they were, they would just be overthrown and yeah. the convicts would escape. So that's the plan. Getting all three convicts across to the other bank safely without being outnumbered. It can be done. It's not quite as difficult, probably, to work out than the, uh, the now one, but it's, it's a fun project and it's an attractive puzzle. I mean, that would look nice in any yeah. way. The shelf of any den or study, wouldn't it? To be honest. 
I mean, you could make a simpler version than this. This looks nice, but you could dispense with these. This you could basically just have about the set on top, you know. But um, it's worth the trouble because it's just such an attractive puzzle. Yeah, yeah. So if so you like to have a go at making that, possibly you'll reveal maybe a, a simpler version. You'll reveal the answer next time. I'll show you next week. Uh, next, uh, be next Thursday when it on the. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show the there is um, how to do it next. Um, next Thursday. So, till then I'll say cheerio.